Hello everyone, this is the fifth video in my Formula Student series and the final video covering KiCad content. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a neat, tidy schematic making use of KiCad's built-in tools. Before we get into it, I just want to thank everybody for watching this video series. The numbers are really blowing my mind how many of you are watching me droning on about KiCad. Anyway, let's get started. So once we've finished everything, this is what our schematic should look like. I just recorded myself for an hour and a half making this, but sadly my audio wasn't working. So here's attempt number two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the schematic we made previously on the right, and I'm going to make a new KiCad project on the left. Right, here we go. The reason I'm starting again is because it's very bad practice to make a messy schematic and then try and neaten it afterwards. Just start by making it neat in the first place. The only reason I made it messy in the video FS1 is because I wanted to go from initial concept to finalised board as fast as possible. And as you're about to see, making the schematic neat takes a lot of time, considering that it doesn't actually affect the final board you end up with. So the main difference we're going to be making is the use of sheets, which is basically going to split our schematic into multiple mini schematics. There's going to be the main, the main one here, and then there's going to be multiple boxes that we can click on. And clicking on each of those boxes will bring us to a new sub-schematic containing sections of the circuit. This circuit works quite well for that because we have the section with the digits which is repeated seven times. Six of them are identical and one of them is slightly different. So the first thing to do is have a think about how we can split up our schematic into different sections. So right now I'm seeing two obvious sections jumping out to me. The first is up here. We can split our clock divider circuit into its own sub-schematic with an input and an output. And they're the only two connections that we'll need. When viewing the main schematic page, if people are just trying to understand how the circuit works, they don't really care the exact specifics of how we're dividing the clock down. They just want to see a little box that says clock divider with an input and an output. And for the displays, the main reason of putting it on a sheet is that all seven display circuits will link to the same sheet. So if we wanted to say change the decoupling capacitor value or footprint, we can just double click and change it once and it will change it for all seven displays. And the components in the top right I'm not going to put into a separate sheet because you don't need sheets for everything and you don't want to get carried away burying the schematic in sheet after sheet with very little on each one. So I'm going to start by making the sheet for the clock divider. So what you want to do is on the right here click the button for a new sheet. And because a sheet is a bit like a, a fake component with inputs and outputs that we can define, we're going to draw a box. So you can see like this, let's go that big. And then what we need to do is we need to give it a name. So as I said, let's call this one clock divider. Don't forget to change the name of the file as well. And then before we press OK, the background fill, we're going to click on that and change it to L.yellow so that it matches the rest of the components. Another thing you could maybe do is change it to L.orange so that it's clear this is a separate sheet and not a component. I'm actually going to do that. That's probably a nicer thing to do. So now we can enter our sheet by just double clicking on it and you can see we've now got a completely empty page which is going to link to our other page using labels which we're going to add in a bit. Now I'm just going to copy and paste in the circuit that we made and the first thing I'm going to do is make the most of this new space we've got and tidy up the circuit a bit. By tidy up I just mean removing unnecessary kinks in wires like this and just spacing things out a bit more so that it's easier to see what's connected to what. Another thing we're doing to tidy things up is moving the labels. So you can see quite often symbols, their labels will be quite far away. You can bring them in without, without really any major impact. If you're starting a new schematic as well, it's probably worth moving it once and then, for example, I can just copy and paste this ground and then I don't have to move the label on every single one later on. So as you can see, noticing where components can be moved to reduce angles in traces and just generally make the schematic clearer is a big part of tidying a schematic up. But now that we've got it all nice and tidy, what we want to do is we want to get the signals in and out of this sub-schematic that can go to the rest of the schematic. So as I said before, all we need is a clock in and a clock out. To add those, what we're going to do is we're going to add a hierarchical label. So if I click on that, then we can type in our name. So let's go for clock in. 
and I'm going to put this there for now. Press R to rotate it. And then if I connect that to the input, now basically what that's telling KiCad is when I go back to the main schematic, which I'll do now with this arrow, I can right click on the box that links to that sub schematic and I can click import sheet pin and then you can drag it around and click where you want it to go and basically whatever I connect to this is now going to go inside this box and connect to here. There's also two other types of labels which are useful. So the top one is a net label which you can use within a particular sheet on the schematic and everything given the same name is connected together so you can think of it a bit like a like a power supply in a way, how all the 5 volts are connected together, all the grounds are connected together, but you can call it what you want and it can be for a signal, it can be for anything. Normally they wouldn't just be used for something that's connected to more than two points. You can also use it if you've got a wire that's going across a load of other bits and you don't want to have to do a big long run. So to demonstrate it I will, I'll put one here on the output. So this is going to be the reset because it's going to reset all the chips. So if I click on this and then type reset and then I'm just going to copy and paste that label on the other two nodes. There we go. And you can see how they they make a schematic neater. Again, don't get too carried away. You still want some wires. Don't just turn everything into labels. There's no reason not to except that it's a bit silly. The third type of label that you can use is a global label, which is basically the same as a net label, but it will connect between different sheets, different sub-schematics. So if this was a global label, then I could go back to my main schematic, add in another reset, and it would, would have connected. It's a bit like global variables and local variables in programming. If I added a net label here called reset, it would only connect to other resets within this page of the schematic. So now I'm just going to go back in and add my clock out one. Now because I've labelled this net with reset, I'm actually going to be joining the two together like this. Now let's head back up to the main schematic and add in the oscillator section. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is tidy this up a little bit, space things out, move the labels. Now I can connect it to my clock divider sheet. This is just like a connection on any chip. I also need to add the clock out one, I've just remembered. So right click, import sheet pin. And you can just keep right clicking to import more sheet pins until there aren't any more where it'll tell you that. I'm also going to resize this box because it's a bit big. Next, let's make the sheet that we're going to be using for our display digits. So I'm going to start by adding a new sheet again. I'd always start by drawing this box quite large because you don't know how many pins you might end up needing to add to it. And I'm going to call this one display digit. Next let's pop into this new sheet and again copy and paste the circuit from the previous schematic. Of course if you were doing this properly you wouldn't be copy and pasting from a messy schematic you've made. You'd be adding these components properly as I showed in the videos FS1 and FS3. Next we need to work out which connections from this sub-schematic need to be inputs or outputs on our sheet to connect to the main schematic. If we look here we can see you've got the inputs of the clock and the reset pin which connects to all the other reset pins and you've got the output at Q10 so let's add those as labels. You might also notice here in the shape option you can define the label as being for an input, output or a few other things. So as Q10 is an output let's tick output. And all that that does is changes the shape of the arrow so it's pointing out instead of in. I'm just going to rename the clock clock in and I'm also going to go back to the previous sub-schematic and change the clock out on that to an output. It's quite easy to change, you can just select it and press E to enter the properties. You'll have to delete it and then bring it back here as well so that it updates. Now these aren't the only connections that we need to access in the main circuit because the final digit also needs to detect when it's on a number 7. So if we look at what this detection circuitry uses, it uses Q10 which we've already brought out and the only other thing it uses is pin B. So let's bring that out too. You can also see on the final digit this decimal point pin isn't left unconnected like it is on the others. It's pulled up to 5 volts so that it's illuminated. So let's bring that out as well so that on the final digit we can illuminate the decimal point. So now let's return to our main schematic page and add in the pins on our sheet symbol. You can see I've made 
pin DP an output when it should be an input, so I can just change that by clicking on it and pressing E, changing the connection type to input, and then I also need to change it within the sheet. So pin DP, double click, input. You can see I've separated the clock pins from the other pins. Um, of course, you can do it however you like. Now what I'm going to do is copy and paste this because we've got seven display digits. So all I need to do is copy and paste. And then you can see if I click on the second one, it takes me to the same sheet. And it is exactly the same sheet because if I drag that and then click on the other one, it's been dragged. So as I said before, that makes it very easy to make changes to something that's repeated in the circuit. I'm also going to rename this first display digit to display digit 0 because as you copy and paste them it adds a number to the end. It's just a simple output to input for the clock signal passing through the displays. There we go. Next I'm going to add the reset circuitry onto the final digit so again I'll copy and paste that from the previous schematic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move pin B down so that this can connect straight and then this wire doesn't have to move over the label. I'm also going to make the others match. Something I had pointed out to me following my previous video is that what I'd done is I'd tied pin 11, so the third input of the AND gate, to 5 volts so that it's always high. So then it basically becomes a 2 input AND gate. But what they said is that if I connect that to one of the other inputs, it will serve the same purpose, so it would make it behave like a 2 input AND gate. It would make board layout easier because I wouldn't have to route a trace of 5 volts to that particular pin. I'd just be joining, you can see here it's 10 and 11, so two adjacent pins together, which is obviously very easy to do. That's just worth bearing in mind if you're ever doing anything similar. Next I'm going to add the 1k resistor tying the decimal point high. And next I'm going to add some no connection flags to the inputs and outputs of all the sheets that I'm not using. I'm also going to join all the reset pins together and add the reset button along with its pull down resistor. Next we need to connect the clock input of the first digit up to the output of the clock divider. For this again I'm going to make use of a net label. I'm going to give it the name microseconds as it's connected to a clock signal with a period of one microsecond. All that's left for the components to bring in is the weird leftover ones, so let's do that now. Bringing these in really highlights how much smaller the A4 sheet is that we're able to use compared to the A3 sheet that we had to change to last time. I think generally if you're having to change the sheet size bigger than A4 then it's probably a sign you should be using more separate sheets. Not always, but probably most of the time. I'm going to start by again tidying these up. The next thing we're going to do to tidy up our schematic is break up the groups of components that are on the same page using graphic lines, drawing boxes around them basically. To do that, just select this tool on the right, and now we can draw a line. So if I start with this, it responds in the same way to clicking as the wire tool then double click at the end and then what you can also do is you can click on this to add some text so just give it a descriptive name so for example if it's the power supply connector just say power supply connector these are a little bit trickier so I'm just going to give it a name that says what it does and you'll see that once we add a few of these boxes it starts to make the schematic very neat and definitely a lot easier to follow and we can draw those boxes around other things as well. They don't have to just be completely separated parts of the schematic. So I'm now going to draw them around a few other sections of the main schematic page. There we go. Look how neat that looks now. I could look at this schematic with no idea how anything works. And immediately I can see up here, well, this circuit must produce a clock with an output of a period of one micro day. I see an oscillator here and a clock divider here. Let's have a look at how this clock divider works double click and then they can just look and see the circuit you're using. Another thing you can do with text is you can add little notes in different places to say what a particular part of the circuit does. So for example I could add a little section here saying what this circuitry is for and how it works. And again that just adds 
yet more to the readability of our schematic. Well, I think that's everything for this video. The next video will be in a few weeks' time, once the PCB has arrived, and that will be covering the assembly and testing of a board. As always, thank you very much for watching, and thank you for your continued support. Goodbye.